Professionally, Nancy Bannock was a long-term editor of Sunset Magazine, but she also was a photographer who was really relentless, tireless in her pursuit of capturing those historic places that really represented what Hawaii was. She's best known for her works preserving Chinatown and Kapiolani Park and the Natatorium. She was very active, not just in historic preservation, but also in communities. Uh, she was a huge supporter of, of Hawaii Public Radio, Kapiolani Park, the Honolulu Academy of Arts, the Hawaii Arts Alliance. And so she was able to take that energy and really inspire generations of people. She did this over, you know, 40, 50 years of her life. The collection itself is approximately 5,800 slides, and they seem to contain the time periods of, of the 1960s, 1970s, uh, and perhaps a little bit later. The partnership between HHF and the State Archives occurred in 2019 when they physically transferred all of those slides into our custody for preservation. And since then, we've been going through cleaning up and, and really analyzing what's there and what's it going to take to get them from a physical into a digital format to make them much more widely accessible. To know that these will be preserved in a different format, but preserved and people will be able to see these. Um, it means the world to me. As I'm cleaning these slides and digitizing them, a lot of them have deteriorated quite a bit and it's disconcerting. It's, it's, there's nothing I can do to stop the process. Even if I put it in cold storage or just, it's going to deteriorate. Of all the material we received from her, slides by far are the most difficult to preserve. And that is because of the nature of the chemistry of color slides, the color degrades at a much, much faster rate than just about any other photographic material. And we can see that through some of her early Big Island uh, Paniolo photos. They have gone from the beautiful lush green to almost completely red tone because the color has faded and shifted so, so dramatically on those color slides that we really, we have to address it now before we lose any more of that color material in it. It's sad because a lot of those slides, some of them, they're just cracking and it's just like, oh, <laughs> and there's nothing we can do. And I know for myself, Kenneth and Connie, when we see those damaged slides, we're so scared because we're like cleaning it, but we don't want to, you know, put more stress on the material. We're doing a great job. I think so far we're about a third of the way done. It's very labor intensive time intensive. I will scrutinize every single slide, every single capture. It's so aggravating because you'll find this one little like dust speck and it's just like you know it can be better and you know that wasn't originally there. And for us we don't do enhancements so we have to do it all over again but to see it being revived again makes me really happy and glad that we're able to keep the legacy of Nancy Bannock alive through her photographs.
I am very inspired by her work. She captured a lot of Hawaii during my favorite time period, which is like mid-century Hawaii. That time period in Hawaii was very inspirational because that's when a lot of buildings started popping up. Seeing old images of North Shore and places I frequent a lot was really cool because you get to see like what has actually stuck and what has changed dramatically or what has been demolished and is no longer there. Sometimes we don't have things to like refer to, to our past, or, you know, we don't have anything like tangible sometimes. But to see an image, it's like super easy to like connect with. You can put yourself in that image and kind of gather context um, with what was happening during that time. My hope for the Nancy Bannock collection is for people to see them and fill in these gaps between past and present. What really kind of pulled on the heartstrings were just photos of everyday life kids, families, just smiling, playing. And I can't wait for people to see the, the collection because then they'll be like, oh, I, that's me, or you know, that's my auntie or something. As we digitize these photos, they're going to be deposited into our digital archives online so that the public will have complete free access to everything that we've done to this point. We're building components into the system itself so that we can help crowdsource better identification of some of these buildings, locations, and even individuals that are represented in the photos so that future generations will have much greater accessibility and discoverability of these immensely beautiful images.